Reflecting back to my previous performance lecture for my formative assessment, I described my current research for my project. These past two semesters, I have been looking specifically at yoga and movement, and I was beginning to respond to feedback from my tutors and my peers by using sculptural objects I created for a project a couple of years ago and experimenting with them using them as props, observing how I am able to move and practice yoga with them, how their weight, scale and even colour influences how they make me feel and how they interact with the different poses or performances I do. I originally decided to incorporate my yoga practice with my artistic practice as I'm interested in how similar art and yoga can be. The way they both involve a practice, a studio and a space. Also highlighting how COVID-19 has impacted artists and yogis. I no longer have a studio space for either, but both my yoga practice and artistic practice can still exist outside of those spaces. I responded to this by experimenting in my flat where I'm currently and primarily practicing yoga, filming it from different points of view, attaching a GoPro to the different parts of my body and observing how I moved and how my body adapted to the spaces and contexts I put myself in. Developing this, I began thinking about practicing in unconventional and inconvenient spaces, places which would be deemed as not being the most typical, aesthetically pleasing places to practice yoga in. I continued experimenting with the GoPro attached to the different parts of my body filming myself in a tennis court, in a lock, on top of a hill, in a socially distanced adventure yoga class and in an empty studio space in ECA. Each video different in yoga flows. I also took inspiration from artists that I previously mentioned such as Jenny Hogarth and Senga Nangudi. I actually really enjoy creating performances through yoga and attempting to find my way through obstacles and objects with movement. I was excited by the potential that the work I was creating had and I was able to have fun for the first time in a while. I then realised that I was only touching upon the surface and had yet to cover a lot more ground which led me to become very overwhelmed by the many ideas I still had yet to try out. After having a period where I had faith and confidence in myself and my work, I began to slowly withdraw from my art and also yoga. The pressures of university and the high expectations I set for myself soon took over. I felt like I was constantly having to live up to standards and mass produce work to be successful or recognised. It was exhausting. They said, Ellie, don't forget to look after yourself, but also don't forget this, this and this are due in and don't forget to attend that. I let my negative thoughts consume me. It took me to a dark place, an unfamiliar place that went beyond anywhere I've ever taken myself mentally before and I gradually started to lose myself and I became a person that was unfamiliar to the Ellie that people knew. I wasn't physically able to move, eat or shower. I either slept too much or not at all. I wasn't able to look after myself properly, which of course didn't make things any better or easier. I felt ashamed and that I no longer had the dedication I once had. 
not just with university, but also with the perfectionism I carry with me on a daily basis too. I had no energy left. I was burnt out. I felt I had no joy for the things I once loved and they became chores to me. I couldn't see past the misery and I was suicidal. Everything had just piled up into a big, literal and metaphorical heap. There was washing up in there, laundry, coursework, rubbish, emails, unanswered messages, etc. It had manifested into something that was quite disturbing and quite grotesque. It was then I saw what my depression was doing to me and to others. I realised I needed to stop and take a step back, take a break. It's ironic that I was beginning to make work that was influenced by movement and I then suddenly wasn't able to move at all and yoga was one of the things that was beneficial for my mental health. I think working with yoga has ruined yoga for me a little and it's become more forced like I was only doing it for the sake of art and not myself the use of very colourful lively objects was brought forth because one of my tutors wanted me to make it more playful and there is very much this idea currently in my course is that it's generally preferred that we make work that makes people happy, looking on the brighter side of life to cheer people up, especially as we're in the middle of a pandemic. And even though that is great and encouraged, it just wouldn't be the truth in my case. If I continued and carried on with the ideas I was having before I became depressed. I don't think the authenticity would be in there. It wouldn't have felt right to ignore what I'd just been through and how much of an impact it's had on me. And I very much associate honesty with my work, using my personal difficulties to my advantage and also using them as a powerful tool for raw creation. After being given permission and also giving myself permission to have a couple of weeks to give my body the rest that it craved for, I was put on a course of antidepressants. That was an experience in itself because I had never taken them before and it was rough at the start but they allowed me and helped me to bring myself to where I am now. I am recovering, it's an active process and I'm taking each day as it comes. I actually made this work the other day and it was the first experiment I had made in a while. I was proud that I was able to return back to my mat too. Not physically do yoga, but in a meditative way. This is a new development or a turning page in my practice and in my project. I remember a tutor last semester saying that my work needed to be more personal. Well, here you go. This performance not only visually represents what was happening to me, but I was able to physically feel the heaviness and discomfort of the mess that was being thrown, placed and dropped on and around me. I previously considered the clothing I was wearing for each, how stretchy they were and how the different materials can affect the way I move during yoga, either allowing me to extend and stretch or restrict me. But now I am thinking about it and moving on in this direction, another direction. What are the clothes without me wearing them, without movement? What I saw in front of me was a lifeless, noticeable obstacle that I am now slowly sorting through 
whilst at the same time developing my work from the contents and raising awareness.